Hey everybody, welcome to Throwback Thursday, I'm Jared, the host. Today's game is Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights, uh, the first game I actually ever owned. This Madden 2002 and a PS2 that Walmart didn't want back, were literally the start of uh, my life in gaming. Anyways, released May 20th, 2002 for the PS2, September 16th, 2002 for the GameCube, and August 27th, 2003 for the Xbox, Scooby-Doo, uh, the name that from pretty much here on out I'm going to use kind of as a common reference for it because the name's too long to just say entirely. Um, follows the gang up to a mystic manor where they try to fi uh, find the uncle of Daphne's friend, Holly. Moments after they uh, begin their search, the gang goes missing, and it's up to Scooby-Doo to find out what happened and bring the mastermind to justice. With that, let's get some facts. Fact number one. Playing the game on uh, certain days results in special decorations appearing from the manor. These days include Christmas, Halloween, New Year's, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, and Fourth of July. Smell that salty sea air, Scoob? You know what that means, buddy. Yeah. Seafood, fried clams, runa fish, cracked crabs. Fact number two. Scooby-Doo stays true to the classic uh, cartoon series, recreating iconic scenes, a laugh track, sound effects directly from the show, uh, classic monsters, music styled after the originals, and voice actors who either um, voiced for some of the episodes or some of the movies, or um, were popular during the 60s. Why this matters is because the previous um, Scooby-Doo main entry game that wasn't based off like a movie or a show or whatever, uh, the N64 game Scooby-Doo Classic Creep Capers, was apparently painfully unauthentic, receiving scores averaging 5 out of 10 by critics. And honestly, like I saw reviews saying like the fact that the game didn't even have like voice actors that sounded close, or their, their lines weren't exactly what they should have been, but anyways. Hey, Daphne, I'm so glad you could make it. And you must be Freddy, Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby-Doo. Wow, the whole gang. I've heard so much about you, Daphne. Fact number three, Night of 100 Frights was a developer Heavy Iron Studios' second game. Since then, the studio has developed a plethora of Pixar games. And more recently, uh, they created uh, Epic Mickey 2 and the Disney Infinity version 1 and version 2. This is a far better success than uh, some of the other developers we've had on this series. Guys can go poking around scaring up some spooksters, but we're staying right here in the old mystery machine. Only ghost-free environments for us. Rip Roast We is the way to be. Fact number four. Remember how earlier I mentioned those laugh tracks? Because of this game's success, uh, it reached greatest hit status. The next two games in the series were not only done in a similar style, but despite being developed by other studios, they also featured the laugh track. I don't know very many games with a laugh track in it, but it's something different and sometimes annoying. Uh, the game also is responsible for adding boss fight music to the series. So like in the previous entries, if you are doing like one of the main boss fight type things, there would be no music or it would just be like a super generic music. And instead now they actually added in like a specific music for that battle. <laughs> Boom. Ah, the infamous Scooby-Doo. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the mastermind. Boom. Anyways, 
Fact number five, two of the monsters in the gallery, the Wolfman and the Green Ghost, have uh, their episode appearances mislabeled. Yeah, that's kind of odd, but what happened is they would say it was from this episode, and it's not like they were completely wrong, just the model that they used would be from an earlier episode or a later episode. Anyway. Thelma! He disappeared! We'll worry about that later, Scooby. Watch out! It's the Black Knight! Oh, no! <laughs> um, review. The game gets a bit repetitive at times, especially when you've owned the game for over a decade, but it's still, uh, fun to play every now and then. The game is, uh, simple. Um, some critics even complained that it was too simple, but, um, Scooby-Doo just makes it a bit more of a relaxing experience to play. I honestly really love the old, old uh, Scooby-Doo cartoon series, like from the 60s, 70s, 80s not most of the newer stuff, so this game is like, great. Um, if it weren't for somebody, <clears throat> Bryce, uh, overriding my uh, save, I'd probably be close to finishing by now. Anyways, the uh, game, I give it a 7 out of 10. When I used to remember where I was in the plot, the game is actually really fun. So, any questions, comments, or just plain gibberish? Put it in the comments section below and come back next week for more Throwback Thursday on Game Guardians Genesis. Why, hello there! Hello. I'm Professor Alexander Graham. <laughs> and you found one of my amazing invention crates. Let's see now.